Do you watch those movies and shake <laughs> okay. your head? I like them. I just like, I like science fiction, you know. Right. I, you know, so yeah, I don't sit there. I, I grew up with Star Wars. That was my when I was nine years old or something like that. It's so I don't funny sit there. Watching going, it I just now. don't. Yeah, I'm not having this. <laughs> I did. I did an argument with Neil deGrasse Tyson. Not an argument, but a debate with him about lightsabers once, because I claimed that they're physically, po- that in principle, they're possible. Um, and he was trying to say that they aren't, but they are. Would it have to loop back around because the light's not continuing it's, to like the fact that it goes to a certain distance and pauses? Well, you'd have to have a mirror or something, I guess. Yeah, something That's would have true. to be the end of it, right? That's true. So it wouldn't. It'd be a different kind of lightsaber. The, the only point I was making is that photons, particles of light, can bounce off each other. Hmm. So we see that in really high energy experiments in particle accelerators, we can collide photons together. So my point was a bit of a pedantic physicist one but is because it is true that light can bounce off it can hit light right but very very high energy but when they press that button it goes to a certain distance yeah, yeah, yeah. i wasn't that's engineering right no, i agree with you i agree with you the distance well, thing also, doesn't work yeah, there's no mass to it right so as you're swinging it around you wouldn't have the leverage <laughs> of a long thing so why not make it really long because it wouldn't be difficult to swing around. Like you could stab someone with a lightsaber a mile away. That's true. <laughs> yeah, right? True. Well, that's just a laser, isn't it? Yes. Like I why suppose. Why make it so short? Yeah, it's I agree. ridiculous. <laughs> you have to swing. You have to be close to hit a person with it. That's yeah. a silly, silly design. You, you are picking holes correctly in the engineering part of my... <laughs> oh, the only point I was making is the physics is that, which I think is quite interesting, is that light can bounce off light. Yes. That's the point. So, but it would have to, there would have to be something that causes it to stop at the very end. Yeah. 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 Which would be, you're right, it'd have a mirror, but it wouldn't look cool, would it, if there was a no. kind of thing with them? <laughs> well, what drives me crazy about Star Wars is not the lightsabers, it's the lasers when they're shooting the guns. I'm like, why can I see that when I can't see bullets? Yeah. This is we're supposed to be way faster than a bullet. Yeah. Like, <laughs> why slow. is it easy to see this? Because it's like, <laughs> you can duck. You can get out of the way of those things. They're really slow, aren't they? They're so slow. Yeah. I would be so angry. I'd be like, this is so dumb. I could go warp speed in this Millennium Falcon and travel the speed of light. But for whatever reason, these lasers are so slow that you could duck out of the way of them. Yeah. That's so dumb. And it's not only Star Wars, it's everything. <laughs> Every single film does that. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Why? Well, well, it's like it's like films like. Also, I worked on one of these films years ago, uh, Sunshine. Oh, that film was a Danny great Boyle. movie. Very, uh, was, very underappreciated movie. Yeah, I think so. I think it's yeah. a brilliant film. But in that, so they they asked me, and Danny said, "I want to do it right, so I'll do the spacecraft without any sound. So when it's traveling through space, it'll be silent, uh, and it looks shit. You know, uh, just the, you, when yeah, you watch yeah, yeah. it, it's the same when when you try and film astronauts and you." And they're in zero G, and they always move slowly. Mm-hmm. It's like, why? You know, you're right. You don't. Right, you'd be able to move energy. very move fast. As fast as you want. Yeah. Uh, but it looks silly. So there's uh. kind of a, uh, I suppose it's what audiences have got used to, over the years. And so in the end, you have a, when the spacecraft right. goes past. Apart from 2001, which didn't do it. Yeah. It was silent in 2001. Well, Kubrick was a stickler for science and for he was apparently he would do complex mathematics in his spare time. What a fascinating guy yeah. that must have been. Yeah. I read that they just, um, someone just found an interview, didn't they, the other day where he explained the ending of 2001. Oh, I didn't see I read. that. Yeah, I saw it yesterday, actually. And it was, it was kind of a really simple version of it. He just said, well, the super intelligent beings take him in and put him in a zoo, basically, and watch him grow old and then send him back to the earth as a super being. No, but that's the that's the worst explanation at the end of two thousand and one I've ever heard. But it was Kubrick's. That's what Kubrick said. So that he falls into the monolith. Yeah, they, they just put him in this room, which is kind of a bad version of a French chateau or something. Watch him grow old, and then send him back to the earth as a super being. What? Okay. That was Kubrick's. Yeah. Version. I How read. strange. Mm-hmm. It's uh it's a it's a weird genre, right? Because sometimes people get things right. Like didn't H. G. Wells predict a, a, a significant amount of scientific inventions in the um, future? Well there was his I mean, it depends which one, doesn't it? There was a moon one, wasn't there? He did um, a journey to the moon. I mean his time machine is yes. not right. That we're not gonna be able to do that. Really worked out yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, 
I think it's. I I always like science fiction. Yeah. I like Arthur C. Clarke a lot. You know, because I I think it is. You're right. It's it's a a form that you can let your imagination wander and address things yeah. without restriction. I think. Did you like the Alien series? I loved it. Yeah. I saw me Alien too. when I was. Uh, when I was at school, it was 1979, right? And we had a school film club. And in the 70s, they weren't like they are now, you know. And the, so the first films they put on, the three films, I was 11. And it was Alien, Apocalypse Now, and Life of Brian. Wow. Which I, so that was my introduction to, <laughs> to cinema. Wow. Well, those okay. are three great choices. Oh, yeah. But I, I feel like Ridley Scott's original Alien is probably one of the greatest horror science fiction movies of all yeah, time. And one of my all-time completely. favorite movies. But I really like the newer ones as well. Like Prome- I like Prometheus, and I really like Covenant, the, the last one. Yeah, Prometheus. I don't know. I, I, yeah, it's I not do. the best one. But I, I kind of like movie. what they're trying to do with it. The the whole idea about the engineers coming back in time and that's that's, a, that's why I was disappointed with it because I thought the setup, the opening, is brilliant, mm-hmm. and I thought this is just going to be brilliant. Right. And then I thought it just lost its way, and it was yeah. a disappointment because yes. it could have been so brilliant. Yes, I, I agree with you. Yeah, the beginning was fantastic, yeah. but I think Covenant was more more exciting and well it's also preposterous like if you went to another planet like the last thing you'd be doing is just breathing in the air right i mean we'd have to be really care- if there was a life on the planet we'd have to be really careful a not to contaminate but b not to be contaminated yeah. right yeah yeah i mean the, yeah. The, there's also i mean you know the other thing in science fiction films is gravity because you always yes. even in alien you always just say the spaceship's got gravity there's, right. again there's only 2001 right where everybody floats around. Yeah. Because all has a spinning thing. That right. The spaceship has gravity, and then when you land, the gravity is exactly like Earth. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. But it's, you know. No. It's <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, it would, uh, what are the odds that you would find a planet that is exact? Like, even if a planet was one and a half times the size of Earth, it would have far more gravity. Right? <laughs> and that's, that's really common for a planet to be, like, just a little bit bigger. Yeah. And then we would be like, <laughs> fuck. Everywhere we'd be walking, we'd be... W- We'd be getting crushed, right? <laughs> I agree with you. Yeah. But, but I suppose that's not the point. It's about ideas, isn't it? Science fiction. Yes. And 